order to have a good intonation, what do you need? Patience and good ears. And one thing that really, really, really helped me is an enjoyable brain. I think sometimes intonation can be so dull and long. Um, but when I turn my brain on and I feel like I'm like an intonation nerd or like I'm obsessed with intonation, then that actually helped me <coughs> pursuing a good intonation. Sometimes when I uh, practice with a tuner, uh, I put one tuner right here and another tuner maybe far out there. So I know like if my audience hearing the intonation is affected or not, then I adjust from there. So I would feel and look at this tuner and look at the tuner where Ellie is. Like that. Because a lot of time when I play out the tune on stage, maybe about 80% of the time I find my hand position was not healthy. Especially when I play fugue, I feel like sometimes my finger just like barely touching it because I was tense, because I was um, nervous and I feel like my hand is like out of place. So when I'm slow practicing, I coordinate those uh, fingers to try to find it as perfect, as ideal posture as possible without changing the pitch. and connect them together. Like that. So there you go. We have, um, I think, the fairly mature grapes. Um, then we can connect them to the main branch. So can we try? Could you actually do a little demonstrate what I just did? Okay. And do you think that's a posture that you will be comfortable using on stage? I think so. Okay, great. When you made that decision, that's, that's a, I think that's a professional decision. And that's what you're going to focus on every day. And you're going to come back to it every day. And until it becomes, runs in your blood, like part of your, when you pick up your violin, every time you play, your, your hand position is like that. Then when we're on stage, we don't have to think about that. We think about the big picture and this grips, those connections, the stem of it just like comes along. All right. Now, could you try to um, connect those stem and the grapes? Try it, just like the first minute. Then you practice slow and okay. Alright, thank you so much. Um, those are, that's a, like a one situation that I find very normal. And another situation that I find, uh, it's like not much ornaments. Um, kind of like a, only with a thick stem, no grapes or no baffles. So, like the Isai number three. So, a very smooth line like that. Um, we probably will just treat it like. Uh, Treat it just like a, a very long branch um, that probably has like two lines or something, and you will still do what we just did with Anna with what we worked on right here. and the angle of my hand um, and see if my grapes are lining up with each other. Are they matching? Are they, uh, are they the same color? Um, are they healthy? Um, and see if I can 
find the most ideal posture for my hand. Okay. So the one word, one last sentence I would encourage you guys is like, uh, violin is a pursuit of minimum, minimize your own mistakes. You know, we can never reach a point that we can ab be absolutely perfect. So um, I just, we are always like approaching um, perfection, just like Bradley told me this morning, and I was very encouraged by that. And don't be discouraged, but know that this is something um, surely you can handle and control. It's just minimize it and ease it into it. Don't pressure yourself too hard trying to be perfect. All right, thank you guys.